You are listening to Bedtime Dreamy Tales. Subscribe to our channel for new story. Story title, The Little Match Girl. Most terribly cold it was. It snowed and was nearly quite dark. Evening, the last evening of the year. In this cold and darkness, there walked along the street a poor little girl, bareheaded and with naked feet. She had slippers on when she left home, but what good were they? They were too large, having been her mother's. As she scuffled across the street to avoid two fast rolling carriages, she lost them. One slipper was nowhere to be found, and an urchin ran off with the other, thinking it would make a fine cradle for his future children. The little girl trudged on with her tiny bare feet, now red and blue from cold. She carried a bundle of matches in an old apron and held a small bunch in her hand. All day she had wandered the streets, calling out to sell her matches, but nobody had bought a single one. No one had given her a penny. She crept along, trembling with cold and hunger. A very picture of sorrow, the poor little thing. The snowflakes covered her long, fair hair, which fell in beautiful curls around her neck. But she never thought about her appearance now. From all the windows, candles gleamed, and it smelled so deliciously of roast goose, for it was New Year's Eve. She thought about that. In a corner formed by two houses, where one jutted out more than the other, she huddled. She drew her little feet close to her, but she grew colder and colder. She didn't dare go home, for she had not sold any matches and couldn't bring back any money. Her father would certainly beat her, and at home it was cold too, for the wind whistled through the cracks in the roof, even though they were stuffed with straw and rags. Her little hands were almost numb with cold. A match might afford her some comfort if she dared take one out, strike it against the wall, and warm her fingers. She drew one out. Rished, how it blazed, how it burned. It was a warm, bright flame, like a candle, as she held her hands over it. It seemed to the little maiden as though she were sitting before a large iron stove with burnished brass feet and a brass ornament at the top. The fire burned with such blessed influence. It warmed so delightfully. She had already stretched out her feet to warm them too when the small flame went out and the stove vanished. She was left with the burnt-out match in her hand. She struck another match against the wall. It burned brightly, and where the light fell on the wall, it became transparent like a veil. She could see into the room beyond. A snow-white tablecloth was spread on a table, and a splendid porcelain service was laid out. The roast goose steamed with a stuffing of apples and dried plums. Even more wonderful, the goose hopped down from the dish, wobbled across the floor with knife and fork still in its breast, and came up to the poor girl. Then the match went out and she was left with a thick, cold, damp wall before her. She lit another match. Now she was sitting under the most magnificent Christmas tree, even larger and more decorated than the one she had seen through the glass door of the rich merchant's house. Thousands of lights burned on the green branches and gaily colored pictures, such as she had seen in shop windows, looked down upon her. She stretched out her hands towards them, but the match went out. The lights of the Christmas tree rose higher and higher. She saw them now as stars in heaven. One fell, forming a long trail of fire. Someone has just died, said the little girl. Her old grandmother, the only person who had loved her and who was now no more, had told her that when a star falls, a soul ascends to God. She struck another match against the wall. It was again light, and in the glow stood her old grandmother, so bright and radiant, so mild, and with such an expression of love. Grandmother, cried the little one. Oh, take me with you. You will vanish like the warm stove, like the delicious roast goose, and like the magnificent Christmas tree. She quickly struck all the matches in the bundle, for she wanted to keep her grandmother near her. The matches burned with such a blaze that it was brighter than daylight. Never before had her grandmother looked so beautiful and tall. She took the little girl in her arms, and they flew in brightness and joy so high, so very high. They flew above the cold, above the hunger, and above all the anxiety, to be with God. In the meantime, a kind old woman, who had often seen the little girl selling matches, passed by. She noticed the child sitting in the corner with rosy cheeks and a smile on her face. Concerned, she touched the girl and realized she was frozen. She quickly called for help, and a group of people gathered. 
They wrapped the child in warm blankets and carried her to a nearby house. In the warmth of the kind woman's home, the little girl began to stir. She opened her eyes and saw the concerned faces around her. She was weak but alive. The kind woman, whose name was Mrs. Hart, decided to take the little girl in and care for her. She learned that the girl's name was Annika and that she had lost her parents to illness, living with a harsh and uncaring father. Mrs. Hart was a widow with no children of her own, and she took Annika in as her own. She fed her, clothed her, and gave her a warm bed to sleep in. Annika's life changed dramatically. She no longer had to sell matches in the cold. She went to school, made friends, and learned many new things. Mrs. Hart's house became filled with laughter and joy. Annika often thought of her grandmother and the visions she had seen on that cold New Year's Eve. She knew her grandmother was watching over her and felt her presence in the kind woman who had saved her. Annika grew up to be a caring and generous young woman, helping other children in need, remembering her own days of cold and hunger. Each New Year's Eve, Annika would light a match in memory of her grandmother, and she would tell the story of the little match girl to others, ensuring that no one would ever forget the kindness and love that had saved her life. If you like this story, please give this video a like. For more stories, go to BedtimeDreamyTales.com. See you in the next story.